Welcome back to page 121. Today we're going to take a look at another major race in Traveler, the Kakri, six-limbed militant herbivores. I like these uh, this major race. <laughs> they are very interesting, one of the less human-looking uh, races in Traveler, one I'd love to see on the big screen someday. And we're going to take a look at them today on page 121. The Kakri in Traveler. Again, I'm using these older uh, Game Designer Workshop modules to show the al uh, alien races simply because these are available through DriveThruRPG or Far Future Enterprise, Mark Miller. So I felt that I'd use these as kind of a baseline. I may, down the line, expand on an individual race profile, but for right now I'm just going to be going forward using these. That's pretty much as I said when I did the first one on the Aslan. So these are the Kakri. There they are. The, the Enigmatic Centaurs. There's a nice picture of a Kakri. Six limbs. Nice do. Jewelry. I, I like the Kakri a lot. The idea behind the Kakri is they are herbivores. They do not eat meat. And in fact, the smell of meat on someone's breath or oozing from your pores. I'm looking at you, McDonald's patrons. Nauseates the Kakri. They find it very difficult to be around people who are meat eaters. So I'm going to go into a little bit about that, but I'm going to go a quick overview of where the Kakri are from and where you'll encounter them. There's a nice anatomical look. Kakri generally run about a meter and a half uh, when they're down on all fours at the shoulder, and they usually weigh in somewhere around 1,200 pounds. These are big guys. And there are the 2,000 worlds. That is the political entity that is the Kakri. If you look over here, here's Gateway, Crucius, Crucius Margin, Glimmer Drift, and Lay Sector. I covered those under some of the uh, Judges Guild stuff. That's been decanonized and recanonized, but you get the idea where they are. The Imperium would be over in this direction. So the Imperium doesn't directly contact the 2000 Worlds, but that doesn't stop Kakri from coming in contact with the Imperium. So here we have a, a quick breakdown on who the Kakri are, uh, also called Centaurs by humans. Uh, they, because they look a little like centaurs out of human myth. Uh, this module goes ahead and talks about what they are, uh, how they came to be. So basically, they were just herbivores. And in this, it's kind of fun because in this one, there's a, there's uh, one of the sons in the area goes and uh, kind of becomes unstable and is emitting radiation. So they actually used radiation to explain why the Kakri evolved like they did, with opposable thumbs and intelligence. I think that's kind of funny. It's also emblematic of when this was written, 1984. Ah, uh, radiation. So many good comic books because of you. Radioactive spider? Yeah, I think so. So the Kakri race, according to this, were affected by radiation and then used their intelligence to uh, eventually raise themselves up and take over their world. Uh, later versions have kind of gone away from the radiation thing so much as just natural selection and evolution. One quick note, you're going to note there's some highlights and underlines in this copy. Even a w written word, Ganak, I'll get to that in a moment. This is because this book belonged to my original DM of Traveler, and he was in college at the time, and if he couldn't highlight it, he under underlined it. And I inherited his travel collection, so yes, I have a, a defaced copy of this book, but actually this book's rather precious to me, and it's not going anywhere. So the Kakri race, as they start, the physiology is they are six-limbed herbivore grazers, and they have a herd-oriented existence. Very important to the Kakri. They are very gregarious, very much in need of contact with their members of their own race. They uh, originated, of course, on their home world, Kirur, K-I-R-U-R. The uh, polity now, as I showed here, is called the 2000 Worlds. The leader of the 2000 Worlds is called the Step Lord. So again, hearkening back to their old uh, days as uh, grazers. The system of uh, family system that they use, the Kakri use, is a definitely caste system. You have the lowborn, the lowest, who are the servers. They are the ones that do the menial tasks. Uh, they work the fast food, that kind of stuff. The well-born would be the skilled workers or the scientists. Then you have the nobles, which are the highest caste. You're born into your caste if you're male. If you're female, you're born into your father's caste 
and then later on your husband's cast. So not a lot of uh, opportunity for female Kukri, but you could always make up a female Kukri character. As I've said a few times in this video, they are herbivores. To this end, they abhor meat eaters. They especially dislike predators. There's an ancient legend of a predator called the Ganak, where the Ganak would uh, stalk the prehistoric uh, Kukri and go ahead and attack them and eat them. So the Kukri, once they became intelligent and started using weapons and things, made it their business to wipe out the Ganak. Anything that eats meat can be referred to by a Kukri as Ganak. It doesn't just have to be this one particular monster. Um, the Kukri unified in our year minus 4305, and they were about tech level 7 when this happened. They really didn't have wars because they're very gregarious. They get along pretty well, and being basically uh, herbivores, they would generally come to a compromise before they'd come to blows. Now, that being said, once they discovered jump drive, out into space they went, and they found plenty of reasons to fight. They are neighbors to the Hivers. The Hivers and the Kukri fought several wars uh, between them, and then eventually settled into kind of a, an unhappy peace. So, the Kukri themselves are pretty far outside of the Imperium, and are pretty alien. So I'm going to confess right now, I've never played a Kukri, nor have I ever had a player character Kukri in my game. I've never stopped it, it's just nobody wanted to play it. I think the concept is a little alien. I have used a couple of non-player character Kukri in there, just because it's a lot of fun. The, uh, the Kukri are very charitable toward themselves, and in fact have to stay in groups with other Kukri for their psycho psychological well-being. They're very claustrophobic as a race, being used to the open plains of their homeworld. And to that end, they need several of their species about them, and they need to have broad spaces within their spaceships. Their starships have, tend to have no real walls. They're, they're very wide open floor plan with a lot of projections of pastures and a lot of scents, which is a very important sense for the uh, could create the sense of smell. So there are a lot of sense of the open plain and other Kukri. The only Kukri that can isolate are deemed by Kukri society to be technically insane. They're the ones that can go into fighters and in groups of three or four to go into smaller ships. Otherwise, they have to be in large ships for their mental well-being. They have a very aggressive military that will enforce the laws of the two thousand or the the Kukri Step Lord in the 2000 Worlds, and uh, they will especially suppress meat eaters. If you eat meat near them, you don't really want to uh, be working for them. So there's a very good short story by one of the Keith brothers in Traveler's Digest 18, I know that's out of print, uh, about a Kukri group being shipped in low passage, frozen berths, and as the ship is in jump, the births start thawing through some sabotage of arrival with the idea that the Kukri will go crazy and, and end up dying while in jump space, and the humans have to figure out a way to deal with this. It's a very good short story. If you have access to it, by the way, uh, Trevor's Digest, 18 I looked it up, is only about $18, uh, or $10 to $18 on eBay, so it is available, and I do recommend it. So... Now, after we've gone through what the Kukri are, we even get a little bit on their language. We go to the characters in Traveler. These books were great. Another reason I've chosen these books, they have tremendous detail on how to make a Traveler character out of this race. Again, there's my, my former DM's highlights. And the Kukri all live under the 2000 worlds. It's possible to encounter a Kukri lost colony if you want to do a story arc like that. They would usually not be very uh, technologically uplifted. So now we go to personal combat and the weapons they use. Kukri weapons are kind of neat looking. I think there's a few depictions in here uh, where they're suited for the Kukri hand. They also have spacesuits. Uh, it's they're everything a traveler wants to be. They're just big six-limbed centaurs. So now we come down to the Kukri ships themselves, the weaponry on the ships, and here... The thing we all love in Traveler, the character generation tables. 
This used to be the part of the book I'd go to first. I just, I love these tables. I love going through these tables. I realize character generation has changed a lot in the 38 years since this book was published, but uh, I still get a kick out of seeing these pages. So then we get uh, Kukri Encounters, where you can actually roll for how they're acting to you. The Kukri Word Generator, which is pretty interesting. And then Kukri Mercenary Character Generation. Kukri Weapons and Equipment. All this being suited for their use. They cannot use our stuff. High Guard Characters for Kukri. That was a big, big thing in Early Traveler was that Highgard expanded so much on the characters. And Kukri in Zero-G, which is pretty interesting. They are actually worse than Zero-G. They're sub subject to an additional minus two. They don't like not having their feet on the ground. And then Kukri World Generation. And there's some really good ventures back here. Now, the Kukri are a very alien race in Traveler, which I realize is the whole point. And it's kind of odd to bring up that they're an alien race in Traveler. But they are one of the alien races that are particularly alien because they don't look like humans. And because of this, I've always found that players tend to kind of shy away from, from being a Kukri or dealing with them if they can avoid it. I've only put Kukri in a few of my adventures. It's not on purpose. It's just that they, because they're so isolated from the Imperium, and I usually will run on the Spinward Barches, which if you look on the map is the opposite end from the Gateway area. Uh, I tend not to have a lot of adventures set over there. That being said, there are some outstanding stuff set in that area from the Traveler T20 era. A lot of the information from there is over in the Gateway sector, uh, and it does deal with Kukri and Hivers. Uh, I recommend it highly. So there you have a quick look at the Kukri, what they're about, how to use them in your game. Again, if you've had good experience using a Kukri, maybe you played a Kukri back in the day, I'd love to hear about it. I'd be very interested in any way to innovate this character and, and use it in a game. The story I mentioned before by the one of the Andrew brothers was a phenomenal use of Kukri in a game. I'd be interested in any examples like that. If there's anything more you want to know about the Kukri or any of the other races, please let me know. If you enjoyed what you saw and heard today, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on page 121.